I've recently lightly refurbished this 1927 Singer Model 66 treadle sewing machine. This treadle sewing machine was in quite sorry state when it came into my possession. It's been completely stripped down, the wood has been refinished using my DIY furniture reviver, and the metal parts cleaned down and repainted. The treadle is of the later style with the wooden legs. The machine itself has been cleaned and serviced and now sells great. When fitting a machine into a treadle base, the machine is attached by these hinge pins. They're fiddly and they won't stay up on their own, so unless you have a helper, the easiest way to fit it is to use a rubber band to keep the hinge pins up. The pins go into these holes in the base plate of the sewing machine. And a grub screw is used to hold them in place. Then simply cut the rubber band to remove it and lower the machine into place. The belt that was with the machine was perished but that's not a problem as new belts are readily available. The new belt comes with a staple attached to one end. The belt is placed over the pulley with the staple down towards the front. The other end of the belt is then threaded down through the rear hole in the belt plate. To keep the staple end from pulling through, I attached a clip. Underneath to the rear of the machine is a belt guide, and the belt needs to be passed through here. And then around the treadle wheel. There's also a guide to the front that the belt needs to be threaded through before passing it back through the front belt hole in the belt plate. So making sure the belt is fully wound around the treadle wheel, mark where the staple hole needs to go with a sharpie. Carefully use an awl to pierce a hole in the belt where you've marked it, ensuring that the hole is central. Then hook the staple through the hole you've just made. Before you trim the belt, you can test to make sure it's not too tight or too loose. Too tight will mean wear on the machine's bearings, and too loose will mean that the belt slips. Then, carefully trim off the belt, and crimp the staple closed with a pair of pliers. Practice treadling first by disengaging the mechanism using the stop motion wheel. This will stop the needle bar moving. Sometimes you may need to drop the presser foot to help stop it. Make sure you always spin the hand wheel towards you to get it going. Different people have different methods of treadling. I like to have my right foot towards the back of the treadle and my left foot towards the front. Just find a method that works for you. The treadle wheel has a couple of flat spots where it can be difficult to get the wheel moving or it can turn in the wrong direction. So always use a hand wheel, turning towards you to get the machine going. To remove the bobbin, slide the plate back and press this little button at the front. This will pop the bobbin up so you can easily remove it. Disengage the stop motion knob. Place the spool of thread on the spool pin and pass it across the front thread guide. Thread the cotton through the hole in the bobbin from the inside to out. and place the bobbin on the winder. Rotate it until the pin on the winder engages into the bobbin. Push the winder down to engage it against the wheel.
thread through the top fork, and then onto the guide at the bottom of the winder. Turn the wheel by hand a few times to start to wind the bobbin. And then snip off the excess thread. Continue winding the spool by treadling the machine. When you have enough, snip the thread, disengage the bobbin mechanism by pushing the auto shut off arm back and remove the spool. Don't forget to re-engage the stop motion knob. So to thread the machine, make sure that the presser foot is up. This will release pressure on the tension discs and make sure that the take up lever is to the top. Place the thread on the spool pin. It's a good idea to use a felt spool disc to stop the spool from bouncing around Take the thread over the front thread guide and down around the tensioner. Make sure the thread goes between the discs. Then up and over the small check spring. The thread goes under the metal arm, not through the hole in it, and up to the take-up lever. It's then passed from right to left through the hole in the take-up lever. The thread is slipped through the front thread guide and then down to the guide on the needle bar. Finally thread the needle from left to right and place it under the presser foot. Slide back the bobbin cover, drop the bobbin in so the thread comes off anti-clockwise. Pass the bobbin thread through the groove in the bobbin case, under the tension spring and back across to the needle position. When the thread's pulled, the bobbin should move anti-clockwise, then close the bobbin cover. While holding the needle thread, turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle goes down and picks up the bobbin thread. Pull up the bobbin thread and place both threads under the presser foot towards the rear of the machine. And you're now ready to sew. Place your fabric under the presser foot and drop the foot. This machine needs a little tension adjustment. Notice how the narrow foot allows for quite tight turns. This machine has no reverse or back tack feature and the stitch length is controlled by this screw. There are no indications of stitch length so it's a matter of trial and error. The treadle has a derailer device to remove the belt from the wheel. Always use this before putting the machine away to avoid stretching the belt. To activate it, simply move the lever while treadling. It's spring-loaded and goes back into position. If you then treadle, the belt will go back on the wheel. To put the machine away, make sure that the belt is off the treadle wheel. Tilt the machine back and lift up the front flap. Lower the machine into the case. The belt plate is spring-loaded so it will help lower it slowly. Drop the front flap and fold the lid back. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Why not look us up on Facebook and Instagram too? Thanks for watching.